I'm going to say good morning here uh, to a man much admired, a man I'd like to think as a friend, Mr. Tom Marshall, the Honorable Member for Humber East, the Minister of Finance. How are you? I'm very well, Randy. How are you? And you're right about organ uh, donations. Everyone should sign up for it. Everybody should, you know. Yeah. Everybody should. Congratulations, by the way, on your oh, very unexpected re-election. Nobody <laughs> thought you were going to win. Really? You really pulled it out of the fire there, buddy. Well, I have some wonderful people. <laughs> <laughs> I have some wonderful people voting for me, uh, people in Humber East, and I want to express my, my thanks to them uh, on the re-election. And uh, I have some wonderful people helping me. And, and you know, it's always amazing how, how people devote their time and their energy to uh, to helping somebody get elected. And I had some great, great help from a lot of great people, and I'm certainly appreciative of that. Well, obviously, you know, when you've been in office for a while and you've held the post that you've held, uh, and then the people of your district, because you don't get to spend the time there, right, that you normally would as an MHA when you're holding down posts like you've held down. When they come back in droves and continue to support you to that level, uh, you got to look around at your support staff and say, you guys have done me proud. No question, no question about it. i got a wonderful, wonderful team. I've had since the day I got elected. I just had wonderful people that helped me out in the office here. And uh, I always... Uh, compare myself to my, my father who was an MP for many years and he was always uh, he was never in the cabinet and uh, people always are surprised to hear that because everyone thought he was veterans affairs minister yeah uh, but by not being in the cabinet it gives you more time to get out there and, and, and talk to people every day and and uh, you know when you're in the cabinet you're, you're going to meetings all the time you're on committees all the time and you do have to rely on on, on your staff but that's what I like you know I like about election campaigns you go and you get to knock on doors and get to talk to people and you uh, you know you find out what's really going on that's why election campaigns are so important mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of like a renewal very much so. Yeah. But I also, you know, I want to congratulate. You know, I've been hearing a lot of talk about you know who are the winners and who are the who are the. I don't want to use the word losers. I don't, I don't think there are losers. But uh, you know, Kathy Dunderdale de deserves the you know the congratulations of the people of the province. I mean, she she was the winner uh, with an overwhelming uh, majority. Um, you know, we have a, we have elections every four years uh, for the purpose of uh, picking who's going to govern us. And uh, the, the the people who win the most seats are the ones that are going to govern, and, and that's Kathy Dunderdale and, and her team. There are uh, those though. There are those though, Tom, who look at it and they say, well, you know, they had 41 or 43 seats or whatever it was. Now they're down to 37, and that and represents some kind of, you know, that's so that means that there's slippage, there's loss. But I mean, really, I, I think that most fair-minded people would would probably say that's a good thing, that the, the majority before was probably too big. Uh, I mean, what a government needs, it needs a solid majority. So there's no uncertainty, and that's why minority governments are no good, because there's uncertainty. You don't know if the government's going to last from week to week, or from day to day, for that matter. Right. Um, so it's important that the government have a majority. It's also important that there be a strong opposition. And, and uh, you know, most of the people I spoke to when, when the election started said, you know, the PCs are going to win. And uh, they're going to have a, a, a majority, and there'll probably be uh, some more seats in the opposition. That's exactly what happened, and I think most people look at that as a good thing because you need a, a strong government, a government that can that can govern, because that's why we have elections to p pick a government. But you also want a, a, an opposition that's going to hold their feet to the fire and and uh, you know do what oppositions do. I'd rather do what governments do. I, I like it on the government side where we govern. Not well, everybody does. That's, sure, that's... we get to put in our budgets that are going. We know they're going to pass. We're going to bring in our legislation. That's what's going to be debated in the House, and we know that after the opposition has their say, the government will get its way. Uh, we're going to be the ones that decide where the priorities go. Kathy Dunderdale is going to be making her priorities are going to be the priorities for the province, and the others are going to they're going to talk about it. They're going to try to you know they're going to ask the government to do something differently. They're going to try to embarrass the government to do something different. They're going to call your show a lot. But in the end, government is going to govern, and and, and that's where I want. That's the side I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. Is Kathy it, Dunderdale is the winner here? Is it possible that the House of Assembly, when it does sit again, that we could see? I'm going to use the word decorum. Maybe change. Could we see a a different a different kind of House of Assembly now that now that we have this different structure? Because the you know the opposition parties have more of an equal voice in there now. But Randy, just think back to 2003 when 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 we won. We, we came into office after years of, of, of you know, the Liberal Party being in power. Uh, you know, we won with a majority of what? About, we had about 34 seats then. And there was about 14 in the opposition. Yeah. The decorum didn't change from day one. The, it was like the opposition refused to accept the results of the election, and it just got worse and worse as we got closer to to the the, the next election. So we've had that. You know, in '03 there was 34 on the government side, 14 on the opposition side. Today it's 37 on the government side, 11 on the opposition side. 
you know, I, I, I would love and hope that there would be more decorum, but I... I uh, You're not predicting any change in atmosphere. No, I hope I'm wrong. Yeah. I really okay. hope I'm wrong. <laughs> but it, but it's, uh, again, you know, 37 seats out of out of uh, the 48 seats, that's a, that's a great win for Premier Dunderdale. Mm-hmm. And uh, five seats out of, out of 48, that's not too good. Six seats out of 48, that's not really too good. Elections are about picking the government. That's who the winners are. And Kathy Dunderdale is the winner in this this election campaign, and I think it's a good thing. Any final thoughts before we wrap up? No, I, again, just want to say thank you to the people of Humber East for their for their for their support. It's it's uh, you know being the MHA for for your fellow citizens is something that uh, I think it's an honor and I think it's a privilege. It's something that I take extremely seriously, and I know a lot of people are cynical about politicians, mm-hmm. and 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 uh, you know especially a, a lot of you know I see it in in, in the print media. But I think it's an honorable profession, and I think, you know, we've got to encourage good people to, to offer. And that's why I was delighted to see so many candidates that ran in this election campaign. That's, it, it, it is very important that we get good people to, to offer to serve. And I think some of the media do a disservice to the people of the province by, by, by their cynicism about, about uh, the politicians. And now. we are, I, I will admit to, to that, I think we are sometimes maybe a little too cynical, but that's a, that's a broader debate we could have one day. I look forward to it. All right. I look forward and, to it. And, uh, and, of course, uh, uh, you're waiting for, are you waiting for a phone call now? About well, the cabinet? I'm, I'm, I'm still a Minister of Finance. You're I'm still working, sitting there. I'm working, uh, like the last few days, uh, uh, you know, that's what I've been doing, uh, working on uh, governing. So has, has, the premier, has, on. The premier asked, has the Premier called you up and said, you know, Tom, you're kind of like you're kind of like the big man on campus here these days. What are you implying, Reggie? <laughs> I'm implying, like, as she said to you, do you want to keep this? Is there somewhere else you want to go? Is there something else you'd like to do? Well, Randy, I'm I'm uh, always happy to serve in whatever way that the, I mean. It's the, you know it's very difficult for the premier. The premier has to make has to take so many things in consideration, and and uh, you know all of us, uh, no matter what we've done in the past, we're we're there to to back her to support her in any way we can in whatever role uh, that she wants us to. You don't see your position changing? Well, I, I, Randy, I have no idea what my position is going to be. I just hope that I get an opportunity to, to serve uh, the people of Humber East, serve the people of the province uh, in whatever way Premier Dunderdale wants me to, whatever role she wants me to play. That's, I'll be happy to do it. Tom Marshall, the Honorable Member for Humber East and still President of the Treasury Board and Minister of Finance. We will, we will chat, we will debate, we will do all this, I think, again in the years to come. Thanks, Tom. Thank you, Randy. Have a great day. Bye bye. Yeah, good guy, and I like him a lot. Always have, and uh, he's uh, he's uh, fairly passionate. He's done a good job, I think, as finance minister. Has he not? I mean, I, I, I could debate with him some things where they're where I think their their spending policies might be a little off on occasion, but uh, not overall, right?